My Hollow Knight as Humans videos have been doing very well, which, don't get me wrong, is awesome. However, there's a certain aspect about them I'm not particularly proud about. You see, Hollow Knight has many characters, and to make the choice of which ones to draw easier, I just went with the most popular or plot relevant. But here's the problem. They are all kinda humanoid. Obviously, they don't look human. But all these characters are bipedal, have a face, and their body resembles an armor or a cape. So they are all extremely easy to humanize. Yeah, I'm still trying to be creative with the details, but it's not hard to come up with their designs. That's why, for this part of the Hollow Knight series, I've picked characters I knew were going to be more challenging. Characters that don't resemble a human in the slightest. Characters that made my friends show a lot of concern for my mental well-being. And without further ado, let's begin with... Is this video an excuse to draw the brutal Malek? Well, you can come up with your own conclusions. I just think the brother Malik is pretty neat. Its design is so cool, its battle is pretty challenging for newcomers, and oh my god, I didn't have to give this poor creature such a sad backstory. Also, it crashes Tissue, so that's also nice. Out of all the designs in this video, Brother Molek was definitely the easiest one to conceptualize. When looking at it, one of the very first things that stood out to me were its size like arms that it uses to attack so I had to implement them in its design. I also decided not to include the infection barf attack in my design. You can thank me later. With the shape of its body, I was able to conceptualize an armor, which matched nicely to the double sizes I gave it. I was heavily inspired by death from Puss and Boots in this aspect of their design. There are two brother Moloks in game, the one in Crossroads and the one in the Colosseum of Fools. I thought that it could be an interesting approach for this one to reference the Colosseum, so I gave it the emblem of the Fool as a nice reference in its design. You can see how, once you stop a little and think about the character, it's very easy to come up with an easy concept. A bulky Colosseum warrior that uses double size as its weapon. After that, you just gotta work with the shape language a bit, use a similar color palette, play with the details, and that's basically it. And here's the Brutal Malek. I hope I did it justice. I knew the stakes were high when I picked Flukmarm. I couldn't disrespect everyone's favorite MILF. I'm not misusing that word, that's how the game describes her. Flukmarm sure is an interesting character. When you enter her arena, she's hanging from the ceiling, doesn't move at all or uses any direct attack. Her way of defending herself is by launching her babies through the holes in her body. If I had a nickel for every time the knight triggers a boss fight by attacking a sleeping pregnant woman, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. After defeat, she gives you Fluke Nest, a charm that Team Cherry had to nerf multiple times because it completely broke the game. If you have time, I recommend checking this one video by Blue Azar. And if that's not enough, she's the mother of the Fluke Manga. Fluke Manga, also known as the most important character in the entire game. What, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, my design. Oh. I didn't want to give her armor. I didn't think she could wear it considering she doesn't really attack the knight. I decided to focus more on her role as the matriarch of the flukes, ruling the waterways. So I gave her a pink dress and used jewels and patterns to resemble her... holes. Her long hair ringlets are supposed to mimic the shape of worms. I had to redo the jewels a couple of times because I noticed it might look a bit too similar to Salupra, and I didn't want people to confuse them. As you can see from the speed paint, I was struggling a bit at the end. I like her design, but there was something off about her face. And then I realized it was her eyes. Her eyes were throwing me off. I decided to cover her eyes with long bangs. It's probably not the most comfortable hairstyle, but it's not like she needs to see. Here is Flugmorm. I like this design, but I'm gonna be honest. She is the second character I struggled the most to design. Who's number one, you ask? Umu was extremely hard to even conceptualize. It's just a jellyfish. It has that orange infected brain in the middle, but that's it. There's basically nothing to work with. And that's exactly why I picked it. In this channel, we're not going for the easy option. So I had to think outside of the box. I went back to think about the boss location and attack patterns to see if there was something I could work with. Umu is located in the teacher's archives with the duty of protecting the Dreamer Monument from intruders. It attacks by either using electricity or summoning Luma flies to electrocute you. And in the Pantheon battle, it also summons a smaller jellyfish. 
I thought of making it have this sort of a steampunk aesthetic to its look, as some kind of math scientist, kind of fitting for the location. Umu can swim in ASAT, so I gave it an outfit that could protect it and allow it to breathe underwater. I gave it a compartment full of lumaflies on its back so it can release them during battle. I made its overall say brown with inflatable sleeves as protection from collision. I also gave it an electric whip to resemble its tentacles. Finally, I decided to add the mask of Monomon as little details in its boots to indicate its loyalty to her and to keep this as a cohesive detail with the other characters I've already done. Oh, and I also made it ginger, so its curly hair looks like an infected brain. Here's Umu, and now that I think about it, I think it could be kinda cool to draw the fight of my versions of the Knight and Quirrell against Umu. If enough people are interested, I could do a little animatic. I just want an excuse to draw my version of Human Quirrell again. And here are all the characters for this video. Which one is your favorite? Do you think I succeeded with these designs, or do you have a different vision for them? I really enjoy reading your opinions. I have two other parts of this series if you are interested. And if you want to see more videos similar to this one, consider subscribing. I post a new video every other week. And as always, a special thank you to my patrons. Blanca Lee Jones, Soapy Soapster, Sprocket Rocket, D, Native Art, RCT, Austin Graff, Jinx Studios, and Rodri Comics. They really helped me to continue making these videos and I'm very grateful for that. And that's all for today. See you in the next video. Okay, now that all the fake colonite fans are gone, here's my essay on why the Fluke Munga is the best and most important character lore-wise.